last week we were truncated a little and I thought I would get all the way to um, reaching and running and jibing, which is, if you like, tacking backwards with the wind behind you. Um, but we ran out of time fairly quickly. Um, so I'm just going to go back to th this particular picture, which, which I think exemplified a, a, a good um, boat close hold, where you're, you're effectively pointing upwind. Um, you've got your sheets, your sails sheeted in or, or pulled in fairly tight, close to the center line of the boat. You've got these nice curves over the jib and over the mainsail, uh, and you get what's known as laminar flow. Uh, not uh, too different to the kind of flow that uh, an airplane gets over its wings and enables it to leave the ground. Um, we, we, we're not very good at leaving the, the ground or the water for that matter, but the, the, the analogy is very apt. Um, it's, it's aerodynamics at work in a sailboat. And somebody uh, asked me um, a very interesting question and they said, what do you do if, if it's too windy? Do you still try and keep the sails pulled in as tight? And of course, in one sense, um, he was jumping the gun slightly um, in that um, we're going to cover this later, but it's no harm just to mention it now that a lot of the situations I'm talking about in these um, illustrations of beating and reaching and running and tacking and jibing, which we'll come to later in, in, in tonight's talk, um, assume gentle breezes you know, sufficiently, uh, sufficient breezes to get you along quite nicely. Not unlike the wind, I think, which is blowing in this particular picture. Susan is able to sit inboard. She's not needed on the side deck where her not inconsiderable weight um, keeps the boat flat. Um, or I should rephrase that and say her not considerable weight uh, keeps the boat flat. <laughs> and I'm sitting there not too strained out on the side deck. In windy conditions, you will look more like this. And again, I think this picture was shown, um, yes, last week. Um, and the difference between these two situations is, you can see a bit of white water, white horses on the sea, which indicates that the breeze is probably at least force three compared to maybe force two, two and a half in the earlier picture. They are healed quite a bit. Susan is out on the side deck. Um, helping to balance the boat. I'm leaning out a little further. And notice the mainsail. Um, and, and this um, exemplifies the point that the, 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 the mystery questioner, because I couldn't see who asked the question last week, was asking, what do you do when it's very breezy? Do you still try and keep the boat flat um, uh, and the sails tucked in? No, you don't. And we have actually let that sail out a bit to spill wind we're only using a small part of the sail, probably the back part of the, of the sail here. Front of the sail is probably starting to, to rustle or ruffle um, in, in terms of, um, and, and it's not very effective. Um, but we, we would keep the boat flat and still go quite well in that situation. So there are differences when you get to strong weather and indeed very light weather when the wind is hardly blowing at all. Uh, we, do, we do make changes in the way we, we adjust our sails, and that will be the subject of a, of a talk later on, but um, it, it was a very apt point that, that the questioner made last week, that um, yes, there are differences. But we're, we're assuming that the wind is blowing at about 10 knots, and knot is about 1.1 miles an hour, so you're, you're talking about 10, 11 miles an hour of a breeze maximum. Um, and, and very often lighter. And they're the kind of situations that we regard as ideal flat water situations for learning to sail. So I'm just gonna move on now. We, we talked about tacking, and we talked about using the jib to slow the boat down, um, and we, we talked about um, balance, uh, as exemplified by Stuart here out on a trapeze, or, or Neil Kramer also out on a trapeze there. And we also dealt with tacking, where we tacked the boat um, from one side to the other um, to, to get upwind. We do this zigzag upwind and get through the, the no-go zone, as it were, the, the bit of uh, the, the sailing uh, cheesecake, if you like, this particular pie is missing and we can't sail directly up into it. We've got to zigzag up it. And we, we dealt with that last week. And if you missed last week, all of these things are on the recording, which is now on YouTube. 
uh, of last week's video or of last week's talk, and the link is on WhatsApp. So th this was where we looked at, I'll just scroll through these very quickly so you can see what happens when you're tacking the boat from one side of the, the wind to the other, um, trying to get upwind. Um, try and think of this guy sitting out on the trapeze as sitting in the boat as you would probably be doing. We'll teach you how to trapeze if you want to. There's no problem with that. Uh, in fact, we'd love more people to try the trapeze. It's great fun. Um, but imagine he's just sitting in, in the boat at the side, on the side deck there from your perspective to try and get your head around this. I'm going to run through this very quickly and you'll see what happens. So they pass the boat through the eye of the wind out the other side and we're, the boat is now pulling nicely on a tack on the other side. I'll just run back on that very, very quickly to familiarize yourself with it. Here we go. Watch the bow of the very, boat. And imagine the wind is blowing from where eyes, our eyes are, where we're looking at this. Okay. So we, we've seen tacking. This is the no-go zone where we saw this boat tack from this side of the no-go zone to that side of the no-go zone as part of a zigzag upwind to get to the top of the screen there. We're now going to look at another point of sailing, which is reaching. And there's three arrows here, if you like, which signify reaching. And there's a close reach, a beam reach, a, and a broad reach. They're all sailing, if you like, more or less across the wind, with the wind coming in, as you'll see in this little diagram here, I'll just blow that up for you. You see the wind coming across this little diagram. The sails are further out, whereas when we were dealing with close hauls last week, the sails were tight in. But now we can let our sails out. And not only that, this uh, centerboard, which I've spoken a lot about, uh, the, 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 the bit of plywood or plastic or lead, as the case may be, depending on what type of boat you're sailing, that goes under the boat and sticks down into the water like an inverted fin. That um, can be brought up a little bit, but for the sake of argument, don't, don't worry too much about that. You can leave it down if you want to, but it makes no difference when you're reaching to bring your centerboard up a little. It, it swivels or it slides up one or the other. So our sails are relaxed. Um, they, they're still keeping pace with each other. I, I remember I told you about these two sails operating in unison as a kind of a little chorus as it were, um, where the, 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 the small sail in the front of the jib is feeding a breeze across the back of the main sail. And the, the power of those two sails when they act together and they're brought closer together is um, greater than the sum of their parts, if you like. In other words, if you had those two sails at opposite, opposite ends of the boat, and not impacting on each other, you wouldn't get the same power out of them. But now you've got the two sails acting together. And just as in when you were beating, um, they're, they're doing great work together. So we're now on the point of sailing a reach. And you can also go from this reach, that reach, and to this reach, almost away from the wind. Um, but they're all reaches and they all develop hydrodynamic or aerodynamic force. The, the old airplane wing, wing analogy once again rears its ugly head. So we're going to look primarily at a beam reach in some of these photographs and I'll show you what they look like, what it looks like. So Susan and I again, um, the, wind, the sails are not as tight. The, the, the main sail, you can probably see it as well, but it's, it's let out quite a bit. The jib is looser, it's not flat in towards the center line of the boat. It's, it's edging, it's over the edge of the boat there. Um, and the other interesting thing is how relaxed Susan is looking and how relaxed I'm looking. Um, there is very little healing force on the sails in a sort of a, a breeze of up to 10 knots um, when you are reaching, going across the wind. The, the wind, if you like, is coming in from here. I don't know if you can see my, my pointer or my... Yeah, yes, we can. Person. And uh, the wind is coming in this direction, uh, probably actually slightly from forward. It'll be a close reach, slightly from forward. And 
our sales are developing a nice bit of power. We're, we're accelerating. You can see we're, we're, we're throwing up little waves and, you know, a bit of a wash coming out behind us. We're actually going faster. And this is the fastest point of sailing is when the wind is coming in at more or less at right angles to the boat. It's the fastest point of sailing, faster than a run, certainly faster than a beat. And it's also uh, incredibly relaxing in that you've got speed and you don't have to work too hard for it. Now, if the breeze was any stronger, Susan might have to join me on the, on the side deck and we might be leaning out a bit. But nothing like the effort you have to go to to keep a boat upright on a beat um, or on close reaching or on close, close hauled, rather. This is reaching and it's, it's a, a slightly more relaxed way of sailing. Now you can see uh, Liam O'Callaghan, our Commodore, and, and Jim Dowling are, are on this boat where they're going around the islands in one of the around the island races, which is always great fun. And their mainsail is out quite a bit and their jib is out quite a bit. And again, the wind is coming in from this side of the boat. So they're able to harness the wind, they're able to develop aerodynamic force without paying the healing and the side slip penalty. Um, so it's, it's quite nice. This is basically the second best thing a boat is designed for, or a modern sailboat is designed for with this type of rig. The first thing they're designed for is going upwind and, and the, the, there's a lot of trade-offs in aerodynamics to make the boat go upwind. But the second best thing they do is go across the wind. Uh, more of the same. Yeah, and you can see incidentally that when the wind frees up a little bit more, I think that there's a mark just here that they're going to turn around and then head down the sound between the islands and, and the South Beach. Uh, boats are starting to be able to put up a spinnaker. Um, and this is a new development for us. We're not going to do too much about spinnakers on this, but um, let you know they exist and they're great fun. They're a challenging sail to fly, but um, they, they are good fun. Um, and here you can see Liam has a spinnaker up and I think it's just been set because normally the tack would be down here and the, the spinnaker pole would be closer to the, the um, force day. But the, I think the spinnaker has just gone up and they're getting everything sorted out. And he is reaching, the wind is coming in on the opposite side of the boat uh, at right angles more or less to the boat, give or take a few degrees. And they're moving along nicely and they're even able to put up a spinnaker to make the boat go even faster. Um, Ian and Colm uh, are doing the same thing in their GP14. They, they spin it up. They're a little bit further on. They have it trimmed and they're reaching. Their sails are out a bit further and they're going quite nicely. You can see a little, nice little wake and a little um, bow wave there. Uh, more boats with um, spinnakers up and reaching the wind coming over this way. Everything quite relaxed. In fact, in this one, you can see um, that the helmsman is down to leeward. He's gone to the other side of the boat, the wrong side of the boat, if you like to put it that way. Uh, quite simply, so that his crew who is flying the spinnaker can stay out on the side deck and keep an eye on the spinnaker because it's hard to see it because it's out there behind the, the, the jib. So that, that's an interesting point that, again, the, the, the rules kind of are, are broken slightly um, when, you're, when you're on a reach. It's a different scenario. Um, here's Susan and I again on a reach. And this one shows you the, 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 the boom out further, the mainsail not in as tight, the jib not in as tight. And look at the telltales there, very interesting. You, tell, you can't really see them terribly clearly, but they're flowing nicely. There's, there's a nice pattern aft. Um, they're, 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 they tell me that the wind is certainly blowing correctly over the jib. And Susan is able to sit into the boat uh, because she's not needed on the side deck. But we're, we're going fairly smartly there. You can see there's a, there's a nice wake coming out at the back. See it there. That, that indicates that there's some speed going on. So move on to the next picture. And we're going to look now at going downwind. And going downwind is in one sense very straightforward. There is very little you can do to develop aerodynamic force 
as I think I said earlier, you might as well take the blanket off your bed and hang it out of the mast uh, uh, rather than wear out your, your expensive sails uh, going downwind. And if you look at this little diagram here, I'll enlarge it for you. This boat is on what we call a run and going downwind is called running and you're running before the wind. The mainsail is right out at right angles to the boat. In fact, on a, on a boat with a conventional uh, stayed rig, in other words, with these wire uh, stays or sh shrouds, as we call them, holding up the mast, that sail cannot go out any further because the boom will have gone against the, 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 the wire shrouds holding up the mast. The jib is also out fully, and it's on the opposite side of the boat. And that's actually a good thing. If it was on the same side of the boat as you would have it in beating and running, or beating and reaching, it wouldn't catch the wind. Its wind would be stolen by the mainsail. So we can push it out and we do what's called goose swinging, where it doesn't look like a goose, does it? Good. We call it goose swinging. And the wind is able to come freely into this sail and push us along, and it's able to freely come into this sail and push us along. But that's all it's doing. It's pushing us along. Now, some boats, um, and the mermaids are very good at this, um, will take a risk in a race of taking longer to get down the downwind leg. In every race, there's usually one or two downwind legs where you just go straight down from one mark to another with the wind behind you. And they will actually broad reach down the course, down the leg, and they'll sail this way, and then they'll tack or jibe, as the case may be, and sail this way. And they will sail a longer distance than the boat, like our boat, for example, um, we always tend to go dead downwind rather than, than reach downwind. And we find we have a very large spinnaker relative to the size of the boat on a, mer on a wayfarer. And we tend to get down there at the same time as the mermaids. The mermaids, though, will go faster, but they will sail a longer distance. And sometimes it pays off for them. Generally speaking, it, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Some of the other boats, it pays off for a little bit better. Uh, like lasers and mermaid and uh, GP14s, but by and large, we find we put up this big spinnaker and we just go straight down wind. It seems to work for us. And again, remember, we are just being pushed downwind, pushed down by the wind. And the, the, again, these are three boats with with spinnakers up. Um, there are three, two wayfarers. This is Liam O'Callaghan's boat, and this is Susan and, my, and myself here. Um, and an interesting thing happens when you're going downwind is there's a phenomenon known as the apparent wind. And this is the wind that you create by your movement. If you run for a bus on a perfectly calm day, you'll feel the breeze um, as, as you run along. You'll feel the, a breeze on your face. But as soon as you stop, that breeze stops. And that's the breeze created by your movement. And you can see that going downwind when there isn't too much wind about, the, the breeze created by your movement is actually working against you. The, there's a breeze, if you like, an apparent wind blowing into that spinnaker and uh, kind of slowing me down, if you like. Now, these boats here are doing a little bit better. Uh, they've got a nice puff of wind and I'm not getting the same breeze and my spinnaker is collapsing. Um, this is a mermaid. This is another wayfarer here. And we're all going dead downwind. We're being pushed along. Um, again, nobody on the side deck. Um, we're, we're all in the middle of the boat. You can just see Susan's face there. And I'm standing right behind her. No need to sit on the side decks uh, in this particular case. More downwind uh, sailing. I, I think I mentioned uh, in another talk that the spinnaker is a very fickle sail. And I think this exemplifies it. Have a look at that one. Um, he's come to grief there. It's, it, it's gone up like an hourglass. And very often on a light day, there isn't sufficient wind in the sail to, to blow it out, as it were. On a windy day, that doesn't stay around. But sometimes you'll go from one end of the course to the other with your sail in a knot. Um, Whereas Paul here in this one is, is doing very nicely. His sail is, is pulling nicely. And again, you can see lots of boats have spinnakers up. Don't get too hung up on spinnakers. We'll, we'll get around to them some, some other time. But I think that just to exemplify the point that they just help you be pushed downwind. There are 
no aerodynamics at play here. Boats, uh, they, oh, this is the boat with the, the, that was in an hourglass earlier in the previous picture. They, they've, they've managed to free it. Well done. So we're just being pushed downwind. Um, th this again, I, I think I, I pointed out to um, another boat earlier. I think it was Noel, um, and he was sitting on the wrong side of the boat for, the, for being uh, as a helmsman. And I, I told you that it's a golden rule that you sit when you're the helmsman, you sit facing the sail. Um, and yet look where, where, where he is. He's right down on the wrong side of the boat and he's hanging out over the edge. What's that all about? And the answer is very simple. The most important person on this boat at the moment is Breed. And she's um, controlling the spinnaker. And she needs to be able to see what that spinnaker is doing. It's a very fickle sail. Um, and it can collapse at, a, a, you know, at the slightest provocation. So she's got her hand on the sheet there and she's two sheets, two ro a rope in each hand and she's maneuvering that sail quite expertly. And Coleman is just using himself as ballast and he's holding out the boom as well just to make sure that the little breeze there is, it's not a very windy evening there, is, is sailing the boat along. Um, but that breed can see her spinnaker and maneuver it. Um, so that's, you know, again, all the little cardinal rules I told you about are being broken here, but for a very good reason. So this, again, is the, the configuration of a sailboat when we're going downwind. Your, your, your mainsail is out. It could even be out a, a bit further. Um, the, the jib is pushed out. Very often you'll put a, a we use a boat hook and we just push that sail out to keep it out as far as you can so that it will catch as much wind as possible. And um, that's what running and, or going dead downwind is all about. And so there are some real show-offs. And <laughs> this, this guy, whoever he is, uh, he's, not only is he sailing the boat on his own, managing the mainsail and the, the jib, but he's also flying a spinnaker. What a show-off. Um, now, when you want to go from one point of sailing to another, going downwind, um, we showed how you could tack a boat going upwind, in other words, to get the wind on the other side of the sail. So if we want to suddenly start heading over this way, you know, over towards, um, is that, um, I know where that is, uh, over towards Betty's Town. Um, he's going to turn the boat, the, bring the tail of the boat around this way and start heading over that way. But what's going to happen? The wind is coming this way and it's going to blow his mainsail over to the other side of the boat. So um, he, he's got to do a procedure called jibing. And we're just going to have a, a quick look at some jibing and then I'm going to throw the, the, the meeting open and we can, we can maybe have a chat or you might want to ask some questions because I've just been told we have exactly 10 minutes left. So some pictures of a boat jibing. And again, th these are from that uh, wonderful boat book I, I mentioned last week, uh, Sailing from Start to Finish by Jean-Louis Pino, um, a French writer, but it's, it's all in English. Beautiful illustrations. And these come like centerfolds in Playboy. They fold out. Uh, so you've got this panorama uh, of, of pictures. Um, I've snapped them one at a time. So. He's going, to, um, he's going to jibe, and what he's done is he has pulled the, 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 the mainsail over, and he's ducking under it, and it's, it, the, the mainsail is, is re being released out, and he's back on the other tack. Now, he's going to do it again. We'll start from here. I think I started from the wrong spot. He's pulling his, his mainsail in, and he's going to sail so that he passes the back of his boat, not the front of his boat as we had in tacking, but the back of his boat through the wind. So here we go. He's pulling it in and you can see the wind is catching the, the, the sail on the other side. You can see it's, it's slight, the sail is slightly inverted and that's going to blow right over. And there it is blowing right over. I think I've got these slightly out of sequence, but never mind. I think you get the point. And it's filling on the other side. So he's gone from there to that. Um, and that's called a jibe. In, again, in your breeze up to 10 knots, 
Um, it should be a very easy thing to achieve, no great problem. Uh, when you start looking at breezes of 14, 15, 16, 17 knots, it can become uh, a little bit fraught. So you would need to, to um, work at jibing to get it right in those breezier conditions. And again, that's something we'll deal with when we get to talking about um, sailing in, in windy conditions. Does that bring up any questions from anybody? Of what we've talked about tonight? I might be jumping the gun, but just with the boom swinging over it there, uh, yeah. Jerry, um, can you sheet in the mainsail to stop that happening or does that work against the whole thing? You, in light weather, you can do that. You, you can sheet it in as, as it, control it with the main sheet as it goes over. You certainly can. In heavier weather, you have to be careful that you don't present too much of a sheeted in sail on a broadside to the wind, as it were, as you go around. You can certainly use the main sheet to, to control the violence with which the, 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 the boom can go, can go over. But you, you do need to, to uh, practice it a little bit, you know. Um, it's one of the areas where um, you, you're more likely than not to have a capsize if you do, uh, if you do a, a, a jibe that goes wrong. Um, Okay. It, 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 can, it can be fun, as it were, you know. Um, so You've also questions? got, if I could say, the, um, Helen. if you try and, if there's an, a jibe happening, sometimes the boat just does it. You don't really have an awful lot of control over it if the winds are a bit strong. So you're better to try not to, you're better to go with it and duck rather than try and restrain yeah, exactly. it. Okay. Rather than try and control it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, that's, that's certainly the way, the way we do it. We just go through it, get the head down and... And, uh, and always remember to duck. Yeah, always yes, remember indeed. to duck, yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know Thanks. if... Um, I, I see Greg has a question there. I'll come to that in a second, Greg. Um, one of the things we, we used to, I used to do when I was involved in junior sailing um, was I would encourage the kids to come on their first couple of days wearing cycling helmets um, because uh, they, they, they got a bang at the boom uh, at some stage during the first couple of days before they realized it was there. And, and they, soon, <laughs> they soon learned to duck uh, when they were attacking, but especially when they were jibing. And again, if you're not very experienced um, and you don't realize where the wind is, uh, it's very easy to get, as Helen says, an involuntary jibe where it happens that when you don't realize it's going to happen. So uh, probably no harm the first time you come out sailing with this. Bring your cycling helmet. Um, you won't need it after that because you've learned where, where the thing is. And this, incidentally, is, a, is a golden, another golden rule of sailing, which I'll say before uh, we, 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 we move on to Greg's question, is um, you don't look at the dotted line in the center of the road like you do in a car. You're all the time watching where the wind is coming from. And that's the, the most important thing in sailing. It's nearly as important as knowing where you're going. Um, where is the wind coming from? Is it coming from ahead? Is it coming from the side? Is it coming from behind? And if it's coming from behind, is it coming from a good side or is it coming from a bad side? Is it going to blow my mainsail over in an involuntary jibe? Greg had a question there about what you do with the jib in a jibe. And the, the jib, it, again, you just hand it over with the, the, um, the, the sheets, the ropes that control it. You just pull it in the other side. And, and that's fairly easy. The, 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 it's almost like tacking, as it were. You, you just pull it over with the, with the, the ropes uh, and it goes over. It's not likely to hit anybody in the head because it doesn't have a boom. Well, not on the type of boats we sail. So it's, it's, that's fairly straightforward. Again, though, in very, very windy conditions, it's probably no harm to, to do that fairly smartly as well, um, rather than leave it in a situation where you can end up broadside onto the wind with all the sails pulled in on the wrong side and cleated, and, and you, you'll end up swimming um, if you're not careful. Um, when we go sailing, incidentally, um, on Saturday mornings, we usually try and pick the first few mornings as much as you can um, for 
more or less gentle breezes and you know there are situations where we might go out in windy or weather but we will do that after a few weeks have, has, have elapsed and you've had a bit of experience you know yeah yeah, yeah. um is there is jiving frowned upon as the wind gets stronger certainly in bigger boats no nope. or is it no no, okay. no. um it's it, it depends on the, on 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 the on the the crew and the skipper um I mean, there is what we call a chicken jibe, where you, instead of um, just turning the back of the boat through the wind, you actually turn the boat right around, do a tack to windward, like the tacks I showed you last week, and, and tack that oh, way, right. and then come back around, because all you've done is put the, the sail on the other side of the boat. And I can remember doing that in one very famous race where we were going around Rockabill, we, we do a race every year out around Rockabill, lovely race, very popular. But the, the conditions were, were fairly nasty. It was very windy and there was wind against tide. Again, this is something I'll talk about when we do tides. But if the wind and the tide are blowing against each other, you get bigger waves. And it was like a washing machine on full spin cycle uh, on, the, on the other side of, of um, mm. Uh, Rockabill. So I said, I'm not jibing in this. I'm going to do a, ta a, a chicken jibe, as we call it. And I just brought the boat around, did a tack, and brought it back again. And right away we went. Took a little bit longer. I wasn't going to win that race, <laughs> so it didn't make any difference. And we, right. we just avoided any nasty possibilities. You know?